Key point one. Everyone feels shame and can learn to be resilient to it. No one wants to talk about shame, but we all experience it to some degree. We only give it more power over our lives by trying to avoid it. In this summary, Brene Brown explores the dreaded feeling of shame and uses her findings to teach us to be resilient. In this, she interviewed women of different backgrounds to find out how shame affects them. Many women shared their experiences of shame connected to sex, money, motherhood, bodies, and other common things we deal with daily. In our pursuit of approval from others, we often internalize rejection. We feel alienated, thinking something must be wrong with us. Shame makes us hate who we are. Brene Brown calls shame a silent epidemic. We avoid the topic of shame, although it's very prominent. We need to address it as a large-scale issue. It's also good to differentiate between shame and low self-esteem before we dig deeper. Shame is an emotion. Self-esteem originates from your thoughts of not being good enough, while shame doesn't see the bigger picture. Let's explore the complex topic of shame and learn how to develop resilience using specific strategies. Most importantly, you'll understand that you are not alone in experiencing shame. You cannot shame or belittle people into changing their behaviors. Brittany Brown. Did you know? The word courage comes from the Latin core, meaning heart. The meaning of courage early on was to speak from one's heart. Key point two. Developing resilience is only possible with an understanding of what shame is. First, we must realize that shame is highly destructive. It's used in teaching to push people toward change, but the results are short-term and damaging. To mitigate shame's effect on us, let's discuss what it is. When asked about the definition of shame, women would say words like rejection, loathing, dirty, excruciating, consuming, and even the worst feeling ever. Brene Brown eventually came up with a definition. Shame is a painful feeling that makes us believe we are unworthy and defective. The commonality in women's stories was a web of expectations based on characteristics, race, weight, age, and roles, mother, employee, sister. Family and friends are closest to the center of the web because shame is closely related to fear of losing connection, and these are the most important people to us. Further away are our colleagues, helping professionals like doctors and on the perimeter, the media. All these groups of people impose their expectations on us, often conflicting ones. When we can't meet them while still loving ourselves, we get trapped in the shame web. To get out of the shame trap, we need to build resilience, the ability to move through this feeling constructively. Shame creates the most terrible feelings, psychological disconnection, fear, and blame. Resilience, however, means having courage, compassion, and connection. In a word, empathy. Empathy seems like an inherent human trait, but in reality, it's a skill everyone can learn. Nursing scholar Teresa Wiseman defines four attributes of this trait. Ability to see the world from others' perspective. Being non-judgmental. Understanding people's feelings. Communicating your understanding. We inevitably see people's stories through our life experiences, so we should take their perspectives to be empathetic. And of course, it takes courage and effort. Being non-judgmental is quite challenging in a world that teaches us to judge. For some, judging is a way to feel better about themselves, but it is a vicious circle of shame and hurt. The key to understanding people's feelings is to be in touch with your own. After all, how would you recognize their feelings when you can't name your own emotions? Many people have yet to learn the words to describe them. And finally, voice your understanding. Let people know you are engaged in the conversation. Key point three. Recognizing shame is the first element of resilience. Empathy starts with courage, which we need to tell our stories, and compassion, the openness to listen. Compassion is a commitment to treating someone equally and sharing your humanity. Once you develop empathy skills, you'll see it has immense power over fear and disconnection. It's never too late to show empathy. We can provide support to find a connection with ourselves and others. But why is it so hard to show compassion? Renee Brown points out the barriers that keep us from developing this skill. In the interviews, women pointed out empathy is often replaced with sympathy. It's when you say, I don't get it, but I'm sorry that happened to you. Sympathy puts distance between two people, leading to disconnection. Another obstacle we face is thinking we can never understand someone with a different experience. But we cannot reserve empathy for those who went through the same struggles as we did. A Caucasian person will never understand what it means to deal with racism as a black person would. But they can remember feeling alienated and lonely. They can recall similar emotions and show compassion. To start moving toward compassion and build resilience to shame, let's touch on the first element of resilience, recognizing shame. Shame is emotional and physical. Aside from emotions, notice how your body feels. We must recognize shame triggers, which are highly individual and often come from unwanted identities. For example, many women reported being called pushy when speaking out. Acknowledging shame triggers means recognizing our vulnerabilities, which takes a lot of strength. Shame is about how others see you, so Brene Brown suggests an exercise for identifying triggers. 
Ask yourself how you want others to perceive you and how you don't want them to perceive you. Next, search for their source. Triggers often take root in our upbringing. If your family shames you for being fat, you will likely feel shame about your body in the future. Lastly, we need to identify our reaction to shame. What kind of shame screen we put up? We either move away by hiding, move toward by trying to please, or move against by being aggressive. It's also possible to use a combination of the three. In the next section, we'll discuss how to reality check our shame triggers to move toward resilience. Key point four. Understanding shame triggers makes it possible to talk about shame and move toward change. Awareness means we know something exists. Critical awareness, the second element of resilience, is seeing deeper connections. Practicing starts with asking these questions concerning the source of shame. What is society expecting of you and why? How do the expectations work? How do they influence people? Who benefits from them? Once you answer these questions and see the bigger picture, use them to reality check your shame triggers. Are these expectations realistic? Can you meet all of them? Are they conflicting? Are they coming from you or outside influences? Do you have control over other people's image of you? This strategy puts your shame into context. Its purpose isn't to blame more significant systems, like the beauty industry or credit card companies, even though they contribute to our shame. Contextualizing shows you that you are not alone. Human connection is our primary need. We heal by sharing our stories and finding that our experience of shame is universal. So we move to the next step, reaching out. It is a powerful tool that enables change. You've probably been in a situation when someone tells you a shameful story about something you've experienced. So you let out a little laugh, called knowing laughter, according to Brown, as if saying, yeah, we've all been there. Laughter is sharing universal experiences and reconstructing shame. As with empathy, barriers are keeping us from reaching out. Fear and blame create a world of us and them. The reality is that we are those other people. If you or your family experience poverty, addiction, mental illness, abuse, debt, etc., you are part of those people. The concept of us and them leads to disconnection. It's why we insulate ourselves from people and their struggles. We must remember that bad things can happen to anyone. After talking to breast cancer survivors, Brene Brown pointed out that they thought it could never affect them. We are ready to listen and reach out when we know we're not immune to crises. Before you reach out about a specific issue, identify if the person is part of your shame web on this particular problem. Knowing who you can talk to about a certain topic is essential to find a connection instead of getting deeper into the shame web. Key point five, mustering the courage to talk about shame will pay off. It hurts to be unable to talk about your pain. Shame is especially tricky since it survives on remaining unnoticed. But when we learn to recognize shame and its triggers and have the courage to reach out, we can start practicing speaking shame. Here, we meet the fourth element of resilience. For many, the issue is simply a need for more vocabulary on this topic. We use general metaphors like dying inside instead of specific language. A lack of ability to describe our feelings causes the fear of speaking shame. We can tell the other person how we feel and voice our needs by speaking shame. One woman told Brene Brown how every time she visits her mother, she first hears, oh, you're still fat. It's a natural reaction to move against shame and angrily tell her to stop saying that. It certainly takes courage to say she's hurt, but it's a step toward patching things up. Some people might say you're making too big a deal out of it to justify their shaming behavior, or even worse, disguise shaming by calling it brutal honesty, but it's anger or fear. To demonstrate speaking shame, let's look at a guide that author Jody Earle compiled after struggling with infertility for over a decade. Her primary purpose is to give people an understanding of her experience from her perspective by communicating her feelings. She talks about feeling frightened, ashamed, alone, and unsettled. She always thought she'd be able to have children, and finding out that she couldn't brought her a sense of hopelessness. Then, she addresses the people who care and want to help. She talks about her needs. She needs people to listen, support her, educate themselves on the issue, and have patience. Dealing with such a complicated issue takes time, and she needs people to understand and encourage her. Speaking shame is challenging, but you are already learning this skill by embarking on this journey. Key point six, practicing courage, compassion, and connection makes us resilient to shame. Avoiding shame is challenging when everything around us is edited for perfection. Screens and magazines blast us with images of perfect bodies, families, mothers, and many more. We are supposed to be effortlessly perfect. The reality is that behind these images is a ton of work. Believing success comes to someone naturally leads to shame. Perfectionism haunts us in many areas, especially regarding body image, motherhood, and caregiving. Setting a goal of being perfect makes us ignore our limitations and vulnerabilities. Choosing growth instead of perfection is a more realistic goal that boosts our shame resilience. 
It's a way of choosing empathy. Allowing yourself to see humanity's imperfections also means acknowledging that fear is part of the journey to shame resilience and better connections in our relationships. Remember, it takes courage to open up. Another integral emotion in building relationships is anger. We all feel it, but constructively expressing it is a skill few people have. Lashing out cannot lead to a meaningful conversation. We must use compassion to avoid turning anger into blame. Disconnection is both the source and consequence of shame, fear, and blame. Insulating, judging others, blaming, raging, stereotyping, labeling, these are all forms of disconnection. Brené Brown Let's now discuss how authenticity intertwines with establishing a connection. Authenticity is sharing yourself with honesty and sincerity. But can we be genuine while being ashamed of who we are? Shame drives us away from being authentic. It pushes us to create a perfect persona to feel normal. A lack of shame resilience makes authenticity challenging, but it's much easier with courage, compassion, and connection. We must be kind to ourselves, which can be even harder than showing empathy to others. To develop self-empathy, we need to understand our strengths and limitations. We must celebrate what we do well and look at our faults from another perspective. Some of them might turn out to be strengths. When we accept ourselves for who we are and are authentic, we see who we can form meaningful connections with. After all, our connection network is the people around whom we can be ourselves. Conclusion Renee Brown describes her shame resilience theory, which is the basis for a lot of her work as a system of the following propositions. Resilience starts with us. Once we take personal responsibility for developing it, we can start making changes and spread them to the people close to us. Shame is an intense pain that makes us believe we are too flawed to deserve acceptance. Empathy is the opposite of shame and requires courage, compassion, and connection. While we cannot be resistant to shame, we can develop resilience to it. The level of resilience depends on our ability to recognize shame, use critical awareness, reach out, and speak shame. But what about the men in our social circle? Is shame different for them? When Brene Brown talked to men about this issue, she learned that the definition and experience of shame were the same for men. The difference is the social community expectation they have. The biggest thing expected of men is never to show weakness. When men and women put the pressure of meeting unrealistic gender expectations on each other, we cannot be authentic and move toward disconnection. People thrive on connection. We all need to feel like we belong. Creating change by making choices fueled by empathy is the key to building a culture of connection. While it sounds very optimistic, Brene Brown thinks it's possible. We can all start making change by practicing ordinary courage. Try this. When practicing the strategies we discussed earlier, try writing everything down. Seeing the answers on paper will help structure them and see the big picture more clearly. Once you write it down, you'll find it easier to follow these strategies in your day-to-day -day life.